The Agile Manifesto argues four points. And essentially they're saying that while they value the things on the right, you should prefer the things on the left. So, the things, so it's important to remember that they're not saying that the things on the right are valueless, are useless, but rather that the things on the left generally should be preferred. So I want to make four videos where I talk about each of these points separately. And the first one is that you should prefer individuals and interactions over processes and tools. So what does this mean? Very simply, I think of this as that when it comes to processes, when it comes to tools, one size does not fit all. In other words, you have to look at the constellation of individuals that you are working with, your team, your company, your, the people on your project. You have to look at the constellation of people and then, given these people, determine what are appropriate processes and what are appropriate tools. So it's the classic, there is no silver bullet thing. There is no silver bullet when it comes to processes and tools. There is no single process that you can implement in your company or give to your software engineers, to your programmers, and expect everything to turn out fine just because you are using that magic process, that silver bullet process. I think this becomes especially important to remember if you think about Scrum, for example, because Scrum and say Kanban and these things are often treated like that. They're treated as something that if you implement this in your company, then definitely your productivity, your output, your success will go up. It's not necessarily so, right? It's contextual. And you have to look at your individual scenario and you have to weigh the pros and cons. But more concretely, the way I understand this is that this idea of individuals and interactions over processes and tools is a response to uh, what's now perhaps becoming a bit old because we're getting used to the whole agile methodology thing. But at that time, people were perhaps too focused on the processes, focused on creating the documents, uh, following the process, uh, using the right tools, sort of meticulously, sort of to a sort of absurd extent. And at some point you have to say, okay, but are we actually favoring the process more than the actual output? Are we too concerned about doing all of the right things according to the paper or on paper, and we forget that we actually have to deliver software? Are we spending too much time on the processes and the tools and, and thereby make the, the actual shippable product suffer? I think the word bike shedding is uh, very appropriate for this scenario. So bike shedding is a term that's used to describe uh, sometimes over engineering, but caring too much about something that doesn't really matter, right? Like, so if you think about a bike shed, so a bike shed is the place where you put the bikes, right? Uh, a small house where you put the bikes. So a bike shed is still a bike shed. It doesn't matter how fantastic it is, right? It doesn't matter if it has all the latest bells and whistles and what materials you build it in, etc., etc. It's still a bike shed. So a million dollar bike shed that fulfills its purpose versus a thousand dollar bike shed that fulfills his purpose well perhaps the thousand dollar bike shed is the better bike shed again it's contextual but this is the way I interpret the term bike shedding and I think that's very appropriate for this scenario in other words we're saying that do the simplest thing possible when it comes to your processes and tools look at your team and do something that's appropriate for your team another way to think about this is that I think that they're saying that no process uh, to this day at least, right? No process can replace the value of individual interaction. Sometimes it's just quicker, sometimes, and I guess a lot of times actually, it's just quicker to put people in the same room and let them talk about things, thereby share information rather than meticulously typing documents and updating documents and putting these documents in central locations and keeping these documents up to date all the time, etc., etc. Like this becomes very costly over time and especially if you have lots and lots of documents. So instead, you just put people in the same room and let them discuss and then thereby you uh, gain convergence or consensus about what we're building. So that's a very useful way to think about how to interact with customers, for example. So if you have stakeholders that are non-technical, so you can't talk to them in programming jargon or programming lingo, then put these people in the same room, right? And discuss with them instead of trying to deliver tons and tons of documents. But again, right, it's contextual. It depends on your scenario. So this may work well in smaller scenarios, like if you have a startup, for example, and you have only few non-technical stakeholders. But if you're building a safety critical system or something that is very regulated, right? Like when it comes to law or things like this, right? Like then it may be a lot more important that you're actually documenting the process, etc. right? Then you might actually by law need the documents. So the weekly sprint meeting in Scrum or the daily stand up in Scrum, 
I feel are two very good examples of this phenomena. So the way I understand it, these seem like ways to quickly share information and quickly reach a common understanding, quickly reach some kind of rough consensus instead of documenting things in documents all the time. So I think that's a response to the idea of preferring individuals and interactions over processes and tools. But even better, the idea that in... So in Scrum, there's often the idea that you should be close to your clients, that, that the stakeholders of the system, people that rightfully have an opinion about what the software should do, these people should be close to the people who are programming. These people should be preferably in the same room, at least the same building, right? Close. Proximity, f physical, geographical proximity is key here so that you can favor individuals over processes and tools. So that, in other words, it's not about whether you are using video conferencing systems or Skype or Link or whatever, whatever. It's not about whether you have a daily stand-up or a weekly stand-up or weekly sprint meeting. Because if you have physical proximity, then the programmers can always ask the stakeholders as soon as they reach, reach decision points where they can't make the decision by themselves. So again, remember that it's not about the one thing replacing the other. It's not about the thing on the left replacing the thing on the right. It's about the, the thing on the right still having value, but that the thing on the left perhaps should be preferred. So it's about not underestimating the power of individual interaction. It's, not about, it's, it's about not underestimating the power of proximity in this case. So do not underestimate the individuals and the interactions between individuals. That's important. We can't fully replace the power of interaction. We can't fully replace communication between individuals with processes and tools. Or again, perhaps we possibly can, but it's about not underestimating the power of, right? Not going bananas and trying to replace the interactions with processes and with tools. That's it. That's the first one. Remember to subscribe if you want to join the discussion of the three other principles of the Agile Manifesto. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.